Hello friends and welcome back to the lab. Today we're going to talk about freedom. The freedom to choose which AI to use. I'm talking about OpenAI, XAI, DeepMind, Anthropify, Gemini, all wrapped up and open source as it should be. Not only will you have access to the best of these AI models, I'll also share a secret hack so these tech companies will never know what you're working on. I call it the Freedom AI model. If you're worried about big tech companies stealing your intellectual property, then follow along so that billion dollar idea of yours stay safe and secure. By the end of this video, you'll be like Tony Stark, yielding the six infinity stones with Frodo Baggins' one ring in your back pocket. Businesses seeking technical support, visit Table Rock Industries, link below. Let's begin. We're creating a local AI server on a Raspberry Pi 5. You could use a Mac or Windows computer, but the code will be a little different. The AI server will give you ultimate freedom to use any AI model with AI APIs. API stands for Application Program Interface, and it's how programs communicate with one another. Our AI server will allow anyone on the same network, at home or in the office, use a program called Open Web UI, which is a user interface that allows us to communicate with these powerful large language models from a computer or mobile device. This is kind of a hack to the system because now you don't need to pay for monthly subscriptions for all your family members or employees, but still get access to the best AI models that normally cost hundreds of dollars per month per user. Instead of paying a subscription, you'll pay per token, which is like miles per gallon or cents per sentence. Now, if we want to avoid paying for AI and have privacy, we'll use a program called Alama for running AI models locally and securely on your own hardware. No big tech snooping, just you, your ideas, and some good old Raspberry Pi. I'm calling it the Freedom AI model because today is 4th of July, and in 1776, our founding fathers declared that all men are created equal, and we have the right to life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. So grab your Raspberry Pi, let's get to work, and let freedom ring. First up, we'll need to prep our Raspberry Pi. Open Terminal, it'll be our command center for today's mission. To make sure everything's fresh and secure, we'll do a quick system update. Next, we'll install Docker. Docker is like a magic box that keeps all of our software neat and portable. We'll install it with this handy curl script. Now, let's make life easier with the fallen user mod command so we no longer have to type in sudo every time we use Docker. Type in new grp docker, then docker dash dash version, and boom, if you see a version number, you're doing good. Now, let's bring Olama. It's the system that will run our AI models locally. We already set Olama up on the Pi in last week's video, but we need to tweak it so other devices like my laptop and phone can connect. We'll edit the Olama service file by adding Olama host to the environment variable. Save it and then reload and restart the service. To make sure it's working, we'll ping it with a quick curl command and if it says Olama's running, we're on track. Now we can add a high-tech user interface with Open Web UI. It's basically an open source version of closed AI, I mean OpenAI ChatGPT. We'll use Docker to locally host Open Web UI on the Raspberry Pi as it keeps things simple and tidy. Make a directory for Open Web UI, hop into it, and create a Docker Compose file using Nano. Paste in the following code and save. Before we launch it, we need Docker Compose installed. Run these commands followed by Docker Compose up D to launch Open Web UI. While it's composing, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss a future episode. Once Docker is finished, type in Docker P S. You should see Open Web UI listed, which means it's running and just about ready to rock and roll. To let other devices connect into our server, we'll need to tweak the firewall using UFW to open up the port for Open Web UI. Think of it as opening the window to your house, but not the front door. Install UFW and then open up port 3000 for Open Web UI and port 11434 for Olama. Enable it and check the status. Before connecting, we'll use hostname-i to find our Raspberry Pi's IP address. Write it down and then on another device, open a web browser and go to http colon slash slash your Raspberry Pi IP address port 3000. This will connect to Open Web UI running on the Raspberry Pi. Go ahead and sign up. The first account will be the admin. Once logged in, we'll need to connect Open Web to Olama for local AI models. Head to the admin panel, settings, and then connections. Set the Olama API to your Raspberry Pi's IP address with port 11434. Test it and save. Last week, we installed Phi 3.5 on the Raspberry Pi, and now we can use it with Open Web UI. Let's ask it something fun, like, is the Earth flat? No, the Earth is not flat. Extensive scientific evidence supports that our planet is an abloit surfoid. Cool, now let's grab a new large language model. I want to use Gemma 3 locally, which is available on olama.com. To download it, all you have to do is go to Models, Manage Models, type in Gemma 3 colon 1B 
and hit download. This will download the 1 billion parameter model, which will run great on the Raspberry Pi. Once it's finished downloading, we can chat with it. So let's do a follow-up question. Who was the first person to walk on the moon? That was Neil Armstrong. He was the first person to set foot on the moon on July 20, 1969 as a part of the Apollo 11 mission. You can see it's much faster than Phi. And if we hover over the little info icon, we can see it's putting out around 13 tokens per second, while Phi is around four tokens per second, which is a 3x increase in speed. To use OpenWebUI on your phone, you can access it from your web browser and then add it to your home screen as an app. Now we can use Phi and Gemma right from our phone. But why stop there when we have the freedom to choose any AI model we want? That's where Light LLM comes into play. Light LLM is a proxy server that can connect to all the major AI APIs. It's like a train station with a bunch of trains coming in and one train going out. You might be wondering, why would you need that? You see, Open Web UI can only connect to Olama and OpenAI, but we can trick it to make it think that Light LLM is OpenAI, thus giving us access to XAI's Grok, Anthropic's Claude, DeepMind's Gemini, and of course, OpenAI's ChatGPT, and any other models we might choose. To install Light LLM, first clone the Git repo. Next, make an env file with nano to create a master key and a salt key for data encryption. Each key needs to start with sk dash followed by a unique code. I just use two random strings. Go ahead and save the file, then docker compose up light llm. Once it's composed, we'll use docker ps to verify it's running. You'll see light llm has been added to docker as well as a postgres database and prometheus for monitoring. Now that Light LLM is running, we need to open up port 4000 just like we did for OpenWebUI and Olama. Then on your other device, visit http colon slash slash your Raspberry Pi IP address colon 4000 slash UI. Log in with admin and the password you added to the env file. With Light LLM, we can now connect to other AI APIs. It's like we're opening the gates to the train station and handing out tickets. Click models and endpoints, add models, Pick a provider. Let's kick things off with XAI, the folks behind Grok, an AI model that's all about truth seeking and cutting through the noise. I'm a huge fan of Grok. I've been using it for almost a year now, and it's honestly my favorite large language model. In the provider dropdown, select XAI. Light LLM makes this super easy by listing all supported providers. You'll see a list of available XAI models. I'm going to choose Grok2 and Grok3 because they're the latest and greatest. Grok2 is awesome for quick and snappy responses while Grok3 is a beast when it comes to deeper reasoning tasks. Head over to x.ai slash API and sign into your XAI account. Once you're in, navigate to the API section, generate a new API key and copy it. Back in Light LLM, paste the API key into the API key field. Click the test button to make sure it's working. You should see a green check mark or a message saying the connection's good. Hit save and boom, Grok2 and 3 are now connected to your AI server. Now let's bring in Anthropics Claude. Claude is like a polite, thoughtful cousin in the AI family, and I love using it for front-end web development. In the provider dropdown, select Anthropic. You'll see options like Claude 2 and Claude 3, 5, Haiku. Go ahead and choose whichever ones you like. If you're working with something super complex, like legal document analysis or something, check out the OPS model. Log in to Anthropic.com, navigate to the API section, and generate a new API key. Copy it and paste the key into LightLLM's API key field, hit test, save it, and Claude is ready to roll. Now let's add OpenAI's ChatGPT models. OpenAI is the OG of AI, and their models do almost everything, as long as it's politically correct. Select OpenAI from the dropdown. I'm picking ChatGPT 4.0 because it's their latest multimodal model, great for text, images, and more. You could also add in ChatGPT 3.5 Turbo if you want something lighter and cheaper. OpenAI's website has a full list of models if you're curious. Log in to platform.openai.com, go to the API section, create a new API key, copy it, and paste it into Light LLM. Once saved, ChatGPT is in the house. Last but not least, we'll add Google's Gemini models. Gemini is awesome for advanced reasoning and it integrates nicely with Google's ecosystem. I'm going with Gemini 2.5 Pro because it's powerful and it handles complex tasks like a champ. Log in to aistudio.google.com, navigate to the API keys, create a new API key, copy it and paste the key into Light LLM. Save it and Gemini is ready to shine. Before we do anything else, I need to warn you. Be careful when using AI APIs. It can get expensive, so keep an eye on your budget. However, here's a little secret I found. Google is currently running a free tier on the Gemini API. 
How nice of them. The next step is to create an API key for Open Web UI to connect to Light LLM. Name it Open Web UI, give it full access, and copy the API key. Head back over to Open Web UI, go to Connections, and edit the OpenAI API. Paste in the key and set the endpoint to your Raspberry Pi's IP address with port 4000. Verify the connection and click Save. If you head over to the Models section, you can see you now have the freedom to choose any AI. Go ahead and make them public and enable new signups so anyone in your home or office can use them. It's like we have a big artificial intelligence party full of knowledge, power, and maybe some ego. We can ask Grok how to calculate the number pi, tell Claude to make our startup a landing page, have Gemini write us a Python script. I mean, life is good, but it can get better. Introducing Freedom AI, a super free, super secret, super awesome AI model. The idea came to me a few weeks ago when a startup told me they were scared to share their ideas with a large language model because they don't want big tech companies to steal their intellectual property. And here is how we fix that. On Open Web UI, go to Workspaces, click the plus sign, add a cool model image, and give it the name Freedom AI. This is a really cool feature with Open Web UI. You can create your own AI models based on other AI models. Some might call it a wrapper or white labeling. I like to call it magic. Let's select the local Gemma 3 1B model, give it a description, keep it private, and add a system prompt. You can even connect it to a knowledge base of files like white papers or technical documents. It's like having a personal assistant that knows everything right away. Then click Save and Create. We can now use Freedom AI to build a billion dollar startup and no one's going to know because it's safe, it's local, and it's secure. That's the power of Freedom AI. Friends, we've covered a lot today. Let me know down in the comments what projects you're working on and how you plan to use Light LLM as well as Freedom AI. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so I can see you next time. And as always, be creative and build something awesome. Oh, and here's the video on how to run Olama on the Raspberry Pi.